Oh, Robin Brandon's on. Hello, Robin. Yeah. My mother's watching. <laughs> she better be good. <laughs> Linda Motor, Jamie Sheik. If I don't call your name, it's just because your name doesn't come up, and I'm not sure why, but... There's 21 people on and I've only seen like five names, so. Shelly Scott is on. Hello, Shelly. Hey, so. I don't know, Father, do you want to start with, did you want to start with something or? Um. Do you have anything to start with? I have lots of things to say, as always, but I thought if anybody had questions right away, we can get to those questions. Okay. <clears throat> so here's your chance. Ask a question or... I guess what I could say as you're thinking about your questions. Um, met with our staff today who are in charge of First Communion and Confirmation. And we scheduled dates for those celebrations, as well as for the people coming into the church. So we're going to have a celebration for our high school confirmation students on a Sunday evening at 5 o'clock on June the 7th, the first Sunday in June in the new church. Uh, that'll be just for those students and their parents and sponsors and family members and friends. We're going to have three different special Masses for First Communion outside of the regular Mass schedule. Uh, 2 o'clock on the 13th of June in English, 2.30 on the 14th of uh, June in Spanish, and then the following week, the 21st of June at 2.30 bilingual, English and Spanish. So hopefully we'll be able to have most of our second graders and older children come for First Communion sometime between June 13th and June 21st at those three special Masses. If they're not able to come, we may have a few First Communions at the regular Mass. Uh, during the rest of the summer. We schedule it that way. As you know, I like to have First Communions at the regular Mass so the whole community can celebrate. But with the social distancing rules and wanting to have plenty of, plenty of space, even in the new church, we decided to have those outside of the regular scheduled Mass. And finally, for the sacraments, for those who are longing to become Catholic, those who are not baptized, those who have already been baptized in other Christian faith, uh, we'll be doing that on Saturday evening, the 20th of June, at 8 o'clock in the evening. Uh, we're putting that off later into June because we found out this week that our baptistry will probably not be done until the 14th, 15th, 16th of June. The uh, worker for the baptistry is getting in an RV and going to arrive here around Memorial Day, the 25th or so of May, and he'll install the parts, kind of the belly of the baptistry, and it'll be done by the, well, by the time we open the new church for Mass on May 30th, but they're going to take a couple weeks to put the beautiful tile in the font and around the font, so we won't be able to use that font until the second week of June, a little bit after that, so. So we wanted to have the celebration of those adult baptisms in the beautiful font, so we put off the RCIA sacrament until the 20th of June. And confirmation, did you mention confirmation? Yeah, confirmation for the confirmation students will be on the 7th of June at 5 okay. o'clock, Sunday the 7th. For those adults who are Catholics who have been preparing for confirmation, they'll be confirmed on the 20th of June along with our RCA folks. Uh, Lizzie asked, do we have dates for baptismal classes? We do not have those yet. We spent all day working on these dates, and we'll look at those later. And part of that's just waiting until we're able to get permission to have gatherings of more than 10 people in those kind of meetings. So, uh, but we'll probably have a baptismal class, we'd see sometime in June, first part of June, early June, but we will get you that information as soon as we schedule that. Yeah. 
Jason Bowman is asking, do we have a date for usher training? We do, Jason. Um, in English, we're going to have usher training um, next um, Wednesday night, actually a week from tomorrow, from 7.30 to 8.30 in the evening. And here in the Old Church, they'll be specifically training for that, uh, la that only Sunday weekend mass schedule that we have in the Old Church on the 23rd and 24th. So uh, that'll be next Wednesday evening, a week from tomorrow at 7.30. Um, and then the following week, we'll have training on Thursday uh, before uh, we go into the new church, Thursday the 28th in English at 6.30 in the evening, just training specifically for the new church. Um, I've asked Jane Reisdorf uh, to be in charge of the usher training and oversee the ushers going forward from now on. Uh, Mark Drexel has been doing that for a number of years and done a great job. And I just want to thank Mark for all of his good work. He's going to be present at the Spanish usher training a week from tonight at 7.30 uh, to help with that. But Mark is turning it over to Jane Reisdorf for now. So, yeah, anybody out there who's never been an usher, we need ushers at this time because the church is discouraging anybody 65 or older not to serve in this capacity uh, at this time. So we need some new ushers. Uh, Margaret asks, are the kneelers in the new church padded? <laughs> For those who sit up front, Mar Margaret, they are padded. For those who get there late and sit in the back, no, no, that's not the way it works. They are padded, and actually they're specially designed that when you pull them down, they do not bang down. They actually have a little pause as you pull them down, so they hit the floor softly. And the same thing going back up, so they don't make a lot of noise. But they are padded, yes. Oh. <clears throat> Tina... Uh, asks, we've gotten wonderful items for a new church from other parishes. Mm -hmm. What are we taking from our church? What are we taking from our church? Um, well, that's a good question, Tina. Um, we're going to take, for sure, the Blessed Virgin Mary uh, from Paris, or actually uh, from France. I don't know if she's from Paris exactly. That is next to the votive candles. And we'll, her, we'll have her over there in the new church. Uh, we're going to leave the uh, beautiful crucifix, the Franciscan crucifix, here in the old church, which will become the parish hall, just as a reminder of the sacredness of that space for so many years. And we're looking at a couple of the other statues. We may be able to use them. Um, we're not able to take the altar or the ambo. They're too small. So we hope to donate those to chapels or places that need them and can use them. So can you remember anything else, Deacon Paul? Um, the crucifix will remain in place. Yes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> We're going to take over the uh, nicest benches, the uh, ones we got from the cathedral that have uh, white padding on the bottom and bare backs. We're going to take them over to the new church and use those for seating, probably originally in the uh, hallways. We have some nice seating areas in the hallways. And the Stations of the Cross, we talked about that last week. Uh, to look at either using those maybe outdoors in an outdoor station for the cross or to give them to a chapel or a church that may need stations of the cross. Jason is asking, are we going to get are we going to get a temporary certificate of occupancy to occupy the building? Yes, Jason, we have to have that before we can go in and have mass and uh, They've been working on that the last couple of weeks with the fire marshal, and my understanding is they're hoping to obtain that sometime this week, if not this week, early next week. Uh, and I don't think it's going to be temporary. I think it's yeah. a permanent. Yeah, originally they give it the temporary, then the permanent. So okay. It should, should come close together. Okay. They've done a lot of work. I was going to say, the, it, it, the building <clears throat> is going to be complete. So... Uh, yeah, Nina, you asked about First Communion. I believe Emily is posting those dates. Uh, Father already talked about that, but those uh, dates, uh, I believe Emily is getting posted. And families are going to hear from uh, Megan, Emily, and Jerry uh, with more information. And you can always call Cindy at the parish office between 9 and 5 o'clock. 
and she can uh, make sure to get you the information, get you signed up for the mass that you want as well. <clears throat> Bob and Reba Bennett ask, what will happen to the brick entrance with the stained glass Holy Spirit when the street is widened? Uh, we've been assured that they're going to be able to widen the street and not touch that at all, Bob. It's going to come pretty close to it, but um, they said that we could leave that there. Uh, originally, we thought it was going to be taken down and they were going to pay us for the value of it, but uh, we've been informed that it can stay up. I think they were originally talking about taking it down when they were re-running that gas line, and then they realized they could bore, bore under, under it. it. Yeah. They could bore under it and not have to take it out. Yeah. Um, and what time are the outside lights on at night on the new church? Is that? Uh, that's a good question. We're not in control of that right now. <laughs> the uh, construction company is. So we'll have to figure out when we can have them on. But I know, um, I think they have the lights inside the church on 24-7 right now. And they have some of the outside lights on part of the night, I know. But um, we'll have to think about programming those and probably have them on, I'm guessing, probably till 11 o'clock at, at the latest, and maybe early in the morning, too. Olivia is on. She says, are we going to start classes back up next fall? Olivia, that's a great question. Uh, I do not know the answer to that. I don't think anyone does right now. Um, we will have classes, but we don't know exactly what they'll look like, whether we'll have classes here at the church, whether we'll help parents to teach their children at home, whether we'll do online uh, classes. So we'll have some sort of classes, but um, it may not all be here at the church. Yeah. <clears throat> Linda Motor asks, are the plans still in place for May 21st Mass more directed for elders of the parish? Uh, Linda, yes. So uh, we're going to designate every week the Thursday morning, 8.30 a.m. Mass, and the first one would be on the 21st, you're right. So yeah, for anybody 60 or older could come to that Mass, and uh, I'll be the only one under 60 at that Mass <laughs> to celebrate the Mass, but everybody else will need to show their ID card when they come in. No, we won't make you do that, but uh, yes, we will reserve that Mass, and that will be in the old church on the 21st, and then the following week as well on the 28th will be in the old church and then after that we'll have that mass in the new church but every thursday 8 30 60 years and older are invited so. okay no more questions right now so one of the things I want to say to you as we're waiting on questions is when we have our last public Masses, as far as Sunday Masses, in the Old Church on the 23rd at 5 o'clock Saturday evening and the 24th, 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock in the morning and then 12.30 in Spanish. 10.30. Uh, yeah, 10.30, you're right, thank you. Um, the Old Mass schedule, I call it. Um, we'll be entering the last week of using the Old Church. So I'm going to develop some prayers that people can use and they can, you can come throughout that week to come and pray and just thank the Lord for blessings received in the church building that we've been celebrating Mass now for uh, 33 years, um, almost 34. So if you've received, if you had a child baptized here, you're baptized yourself, First Communion, you were confirmed here, matrimony, if you became a Catholic here, uh, I know Lynn, Linda's out there, uh, buried a loved one here, or simply been praying here, whether it be for a week or 30-something years, uh, just encourage you to come by sometime during that week and pray the prayers that I'll leave there for you. Um, church is open from 6 in the morning till 9 at night, and also at the daily masses that week of the 24th of May, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, we'll have some special remembrances as well, and thanks to God for all the blessings received in this building, and there have been many, there have been many, so just encourage you to, to take the time, I just find humanly it's important for us to say goodbye to, to places uh, where we've encountered the Lord's presence, and obviously here in this temple, many have. Um, 
Lizd asks, can we attend the 65 plus mass if we have medically ill children? That's a good question, Lizd. And actually, it's 60 years older, 60 years and older. Um, let me let me consult. I'll need to consult somebody on that. But that's an excellent question. For those who are maybe under 60 but are with living with people who are compromised health-wise? Good question. Let me check on that list and get back to you all with the answer sometime in the next week or so. Yeah. Uh, Linda asks, are there any plans for north entrance to match south entrance brickwork? So I'm presuming that she means coming yeah. off Sarah Road there. Yeah. The very northern ent entrance, we don't have any plans for that entrance uh, right next to the neighbor's driveway there. The, uh, the, what I would call the new main entrance, the big wide entrance, we have plans in the first island to, in the future, uh, buy a beautiful uh, sign that can be used to uh, identify our church and have basic announcements. And the brickwork around that would match the new church building. Uh, so that that's in the plans, but that's a little bit beyond our budget right now. Jason asks, when are they moving the piano? Um, Jason, I'm meeting the piano mover tomorrow morning. Um, he, um, <laughs> interestingly enough, would rather take it up the stairs than try to use a crane to put that thing up there. So... Uh, he's he's coming to uh, take a look. He thinks the the stairwells and the uh, and the turn in the stairwell over there will will be sufficient. But he wants just to uh, just to make sure. So the the piano may actually be moved this week. Uh, he's also going to be taking a look at the organ console about getting it moved upstairs. So uh, Elizabeth may be without the organ and piano in the old church uh, here very soon. Uh, but we've got, we've got a uh, temporary instrument we can roll in for, for her to use uh, during mass. Janie Sheik asks, will we still be able to have the rosary each Thursday after mass? Yes, definitely, yeah. Janie, plan on that. We will keep having the rosary at nine o'clock on Thursdays. Yes, definitely. And we are, at, and as you say that, it reminds me, we're going to restart uh, the weekly Wednesday adoration of the Blessed Sacrament from 5 to 6 p.m., starting that first Wednesday when we have our first public Wednesday evening Mass, which would be on the 20th. So we'll have 5 to 6 o'clock. And then the following day, being a third Thursday, we've been having all-day adoration of the Blessed Sacrament from 9 o'clock in the morning till 7 at night. We will have... Again, that day, Adoration of the Blessed Sacrament all day. Uh, the Rosary will begin that Adoration time at 9 o'clock on the 21st in the morning. So um, that would be a, another time, a, a nice time for those who are saying farewell to the church to maybe come and be in the presence of the ex exposed Blessed Sacrament in front of the Lord and, and thank the Lord for all the blessings He's given in that space. Uh, Robin asks, and I presume she uh, means when for public masses, uh, are masks required? Uh, it's a good question, Robin. In the documents we receive from the Archbishop, uh, they are being recommended. We're recommending that uh, parishioners wear masks when they come to mass. Um, so uh, not being required, though. Not being required, but being recommended. Um, the communion ministers, the priests and deacons and communion ministers will wear masks when we dis distribute communion. And I'll be wearing a mask before and after mass as I greet people coming and say farewell to people as they leave. So, uh, Alma, I think she means the dress code. For First Communion, what is the dress code for the kids? Do they have to wear white? They don't have to wear white, uh, but to definitely wear something very special, something very nice that says to them that this is a, a very important day. So, yeah. And for uh, young boys, that would be slacks and a nice shirt. If they have a jacket, that would be great. Uh, for
for young ladies, it'd be nice to wear a dress. It doesn't have to be white, but something nice. Scott Gregg asks, will all the Masses on the 23rd and 24th be live streamed for those who can't attend or can't get in due to limits on number of people allowed? We will have live stream uh, going forward starting on the 24th of the, I call it the main English Mass, which that day would be the 1030 Mass and then the Spanish Mass at 1230. The following week uh, uh, in the new church, we'll have the 9.30 Mass live stream and the 12.15 Spanish Mass live stream. And we will do that every Sunday from there on out. Uh, the live stream, the 9.30 in the morning and the 12.15 in the early afternoon in Spanish. So just one English Mass, one Spanish Mass live, stream, live streamed every weekend. Um, but, you know, uh, Scott, you... Kind of jarred my memory when you talked about if we're not able to get in for Mass. Um, I talked to a priest friend in Wichita, and they started public Masses this past Sunday. Um, he's in a large Catholic uh, parish. They average 2,600 people a weekend for five Masses. He added a sixth Mass, just thinking that he'd need to add one. They only had 350, 350 people come the first weekend. For the whole, for all of all those masses. six masses, all six masses, three fifty as compared to normally twenty six hundred, so talking around fifteen percent there. So I, I believe, uh, and and he told me, Father Urak told me, he called all the priests in his area, and they all had the same experience, around fifteen to twenty percent at most of the people came that usually came. So, I mean, if you look at 20% of our usual mass attendance on a weekend of about 1,200, you know, you're talking about uh, 240 people in total. So, um, we can fit 100 people in here with uh, physical distancing, and we'll have four masses. So, my guess is that we'll have enough space. I think we'll have enough space just because people will be cautious at first, but... I could be wrong, and if we have 100 people in and we have to turn people away, there will be a live stream mass that they can see that weekend, yes. Jason asks, are we going to paint the old church to match the new building? Deacon Paul can help me with my memory on this, but we had talked about that a long time ago, actually with the, I think with the original architect, and maybe into the new architect, to do something with this with this building to, to match it. Um, I don't know if you remember anything else. There were some things Richard, um, Richard Sintner was involved. Richard had ideas about what could, what could happen with the outside of it. Cause it's more than just uh, yeah. cosmetic. Yeah. There's actually some things that need to be done to this building to, uh, to insulate it properly. Yeah. So, um, but that's a, that's a future project. Yeah, it is a future project. So. Uh, Cecilia, are there going to be any more tours of the new church? Yes, this coming Sunday at 11 o'clock will be the next. Uh, we don't have anything going on after Mass Sunday, do we? No. Well, well, <clears throat> this coming Sunday, yeah. So 11 o'clock this coming Sunday, uh, there will be a new church tour. <coughs> Excuse me. And then there will be one last one. Uh, the following week, because that'll be our last Sunday before we go into the new church. So there's two more. I've been doing them on Sunday because it seems that more people are available on Sunday. So, uh, what are the plans for the crucifix that was in the south entrance? Uh, actually, I was just talking to uh, our architect last week, J.C. Witcher, and he measured it and looked at it and we hope to put it in one of those islands in the main entry and we hope to get that up actually sometime within the next week or so before we begin public masses in the new church so you'll be seeing it sometime within the next couple of weeks i've had it on my back porch it's kind of a nice meditation area to have jesus laying there on the back porch on the crucifix so i'll have to let it go <laughs> give it back Uh, Janie, I, I presume your ma uh, your question is geared toward after we go back to public masses, but 
Will we stream any other masses, rosary, etc.? Danny, I'll have to talk to the streamer himself, Deacon Paul, <laughs> to see what else we can do. Um, and so I don't have an exact answer to that. My my feeling right now is that we've definitely streamed, you know, the English morning mass at 930 in the new church. On Sunday. On Sunday, yes. And then the 1215 Spanish on Sunday. What else we stream beyond that? Um, we'll, uh, we'll have to we'll have to figure that out because we'll need a, a streamer to help that. We are looking at establishing a, a committee for the technology in the new church, for the audio and for the visual, for the cameras and for all the audio. Um, and I think we're going to involve some of our young adults with that. So if we have the uh, manpower, woman power to do it, then we can stream more than just the two Sunday Masses. A comment from Avis Lore. I went to Mass in Texas last weekend. It was about a fourth full. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm glad you said that, Avis, too, because my friend in Wichita said he had talked to some of the priests in Texas, and they had similar experiences that he had. Yeah, that parishes had geared up for uh, trying to figure out how to get everybody in with social distancing, and they found out that a quarter or less of the parishioners came. Yeah. Um, I, Janie Sheik, Marian Reflection After Mass this Sunday. I presume your question is, are we streaming that? And the answer is yes. yes. Or, That's going to be Monica Dillard and Bella Dillard. I think they're reflecting on Our Lady of Fatima this Sunday after the 930 live stream Mass. Yeah. So if you all have not seen those, go to our website and pull those up. Because they're beautifully done, those meditations. Mothers and daughters reflecting on the role of the Blessed Mother in their lives. Um, yeah, Alma, we are resuming public masses uh, beginning next Tuesday, May 19th. We'll, we'll be starting with uh, weekday masses leading up to the Sunday masses. So, uh, Tina... I'm a cautious person, but after being a parishioner since 1986, I'd hate to miss the last Mass in the old building. Mm -hmm. Something to think about. Mm -hmm. well, that's true, Tina. And I would say to consider the last Mass not only in terms of the last Sunday Mass, obviously on the 24th or on Saturday the 23rd, but sometime during the week as well, you know, to come to the daily Mass um, on Wednesday night at 6.15 in the evening or Thursday at 8.30 in the morning if you're in that category. Or come to the official, official last Mass at 6.30 a.m. <laughs> Friday morning, May the 28th. So there'll be more room at the daily Masses for uh, physical distancing. It's the only reason I suggest considering that. But, but Tina's right. We may have more people than we expect because of the last Sunday Mass in the old church. And the other thing, just following up on Tina's question, or her point, which is a good point, is, again, my encouragement to um, anybody who wants to come from 6 o'clock in the morning till 9 o'clock at night to this old church building, as we call it now, um, come and pray the prayers that I leave there for you to pray and be able to have your own kind of farewell and on your own time, on your own terms. That would be a blessing, too. One other thing I want to make you all aware of if you drive by here in the next day or so and see uh, a lot of, I guess it's pipe out here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the new electrical line that's been put in on the west side of Sarah Road, adjacent to the old electrical line, just to the west of it, we're having to connect our building up to the new electrical line. So they're boring under our parking lot all the way over to the area in front of the pavilion. So they have a lot of I call it pipe, although it's, you know, it's, it's flexible that they're mm -hmm. using. And then they're going to hook up to our electrical generator here sometime, hopefully in the next couple of days. When that happens, we will be without power for at least half a day. So if you happen to come up here this week and there's no power, that's the reason. They're going to be doing that work. 
they have to do a separate four and a separate connection to the new church generator. So that'll be happening as well. I just did want you to think if you came that we're not able to pay our electric bills because <laughs> we are <laughs> just maybe off sometime this week. Angela asks, is there going to be a dedication? Angela, there will be a dedication. The question is, when will it be? And we just do not know that right now. But sometime later this year, I have to consult with the Archbishop, and we're hoping that things get a little better so more people can come. But <clears throat> there will be a dedication, yes. One thing to remember, too, is the altar that we have been gifted with from the cathedral, beautiful altar, there have been thousands and thousands of masses celebrated at that altar. So uh, we're blessed to start with an altar, even without the dedication of the building that has been used already in, in a sacred way. Speaking of the altar, you should tell them about the relics that we have. Yeah, the relics. Uh, we have some interesting relics. So we just secured the last one. It's not in my hand, but it's coming of St. Catherine of Siena. Uh, we also have, as well, St. Philip Neri, and say, is it St. John, John Vianney. Vianney as well? The third one, St. Yeah. John Vianney, yeah. So, yeah. when I, gosh, I've got to work this out, uh, how we can do this, but be nice to display those before mm. we put those in the altar. So, we may work out something that we can display them over here in this old church building. So you can actually see the relics, venerate them, uh, before we put them in the altar. Mm -hmm. So, Yeah, maybe that's something we can do that last week. Yeah, maybe, maybe that last week we could do that, yeah. I just remember at St. Eugene when we got the relics, um, we had the school kids come, and they just thought it was the coolest thing, seeing a little piece of a saint's body and being able to be that close to it before we put them in the <clears> altar. And then, of course, the relic of Blessed Stanley Rother will be yes. on permanent display in the new church. Yes, near the baptistry, yeah. Yeah. Uh, those of you, I've seen a couple of comments about volunteering for the tech committee. So I think Emily is, uh, is watching. Emily, if you could make a note of that. Um, well, I guess I can go back and look at the comments, but we've had a couple of people uh, volunteer for the tech for the technology committee, I guess. That's the, what, sound system? Sound system, yeah. And it's really neat with the sound system because you can sit in the church with an iPad and, and be able to adjust the sound accordingly. And then, of uh -huh. course, the, uh, the visual, the cameras, being able to film for our live stream masses. And also, we'd like to be able to film for funerals and weddings and give uh, families uh, uh, access to that as well. But yeah, if Emily doesn't get in touch with you, you can get, reach her at eclark at holyspiritmustang.org. <laughs> Have you talked to her about that? <laughs> I can't remember who I've talked to about what. We've been talking about so many things, I tell you. Uh, so many things. Uh, Karen Dubs. Karen, good to see you, hear from you. Uh, Karen and Thomas are excited to bring their newborn son to church. Do you have any advice on what to do when the little one cries during Mass? That's a great question, Karen. Uh, we'll have uh, the gathering area, which is just outside the main church. We can go out there and there'll be sound and also uh, TV screens out there. We can actually see as well what's going on. Or you can just visually look through the doors and see what's going on if you stand right outside those doors. But I'll, I'll tell you, if a kid cries for just a little bit, it's no bother. Uh, I, it's just a sign of life in our church. And uh, uh, if a kid cries for several minutes and just can't stop, that's probably a sign to get up and take him or her out and calm him. So maybe, Karen, you could let us know the name of your child, because I've been interested to know what name you gave to your child. Just happy for Thomas and you. I'm looking forward to the baptism as well. Brian Riddle asks, will there be a live stream of the dedication of the new church? Definitely, Brian. When we do that, definitely. Live stream, and I guess we can use that to currently copy that, but we won't have a permanent record of that. Yes. Yeah. 
And just one other comment on, on Karen's question is uh, the directives uh, from the Archdiocese uh, and from the state right now as well, uh, no nurseries allowed. So we just will not be having a nursery uh, right away as we move into our new church. And we do not have a cry room in the new church, and that's another thing that's not allowed at this time either for the use of the cry room. We're just forward thinking, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> but bring the kids to Mass. Yeah. yeah. It's great to have them there. Yeah. Please let Elizabeth and Cantor know that the beautiful music is appreciated. Um, his name? Cantor Gordon? Oh, Gordon. Gordon Lozama, yes. We'll Gordon definitely Lozama. let them know. Yeah. yeah. Father, uh, uh, Deacon Paul and I have been appreciating it too. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we hope to get Gordon to come in the new church and also play his soprano sax for our Pentecost celebration on our first weekend in the new church mm -hmm. at the 930 Mass. That would be great. One of the things you'll notice at the uh, Sunday public Masses as we move forward, at least at this time, there will be no choir. So it will just be Elizabeth and a cantor. So um, just let you guys aware of that. And Elizabeth will be talking to her choir members about that too, if she hasn't already. Yeah. About the reasons why. There's lots of reasons why. Yeah. yeah. Scott asks Are there plans to reschedule the Festival of the Holy Spirit? That's a really good question, Scott. Um, um, I've been actually thinking about that, what we could do. We wanted to combine that in some way with the dedication of a church, and those were going to happen right around the same time. Uh, it's all a matter of when we're allowed to come together, you know, in those kind of groups. So um, I don't know if we'll have it this year. It just It all depends. <laughs> I don't have an answer for you. I'd love to have it sometime this fall. Um, I don't know if you have any thoughts on that, Deacon Paul. Uh, everything is so up in the yeah, air. Yeah, everything's so up in the air right now. We might have a combined festival of the Holy Spirit, Oktoberfest, and <laughs> Cinco de Mayo, and <laughs> New Church Our Lady of Guadalupe. <laughs> so, Scott, we'll uh, just keep our um, kind of keep uh, tuned to what's going on and what's allowed. Um, so. If not, definitely love to have, obviously, next May, have one again next May. I appreciate all the good work that Milo and you have done the last couple of years mm -hmm. on that. Mm -hmm. One other plug I want to throw out there for those of you who are still with us. Uh, Cindy Moss, our parish secretary, is, is coordinating the cleaning uh, after, before Masses. Uh, the disinfecting of the pews. So if you'd like to help out with that, she has volunteers, I think, lined up for all the masses. But another pair of hands always helps. And also um, our uh, janitor, who's worked here for many years, uh, Sharon Dressel, is retiring, um, hasn't been able to come to work lately because of the coronavirus. And she'll be uh, paid through the end of June and officially retire the last day of June. So we're going to have volunteers cleaning this building and the new church on a regular basis. And if you're able to help with that kind of cleaning, uh, also contact Cindy as well. Mm. And thank you to Sharon for your wonderful uh, service to our parish for many years. Mm -hmm. Karen Dubs, the baby is Ashton Elijah Dale Dubs. Wow. His middle name is dedicated to our baby we lost during our pregnancy. Wow. Wonderful. You helped us out during that time, and we thank you for that. You're, you're thank you for welcome. the answers. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for that beautiful name. Wow. Can't wait to meet Ashton. Ashton, Ashton Elijah Ooh. Dale Dubs. That's beautiful. Will there be markers indicating where to sit when we come back from Tina? Uh, there will not be markers in the pew per se. It will be markers either on the end of the pews or right below the end of the pews to show which pews can be used. But we're going to train the ushers on seating people with the understanding they have to keep a six feet distance in the pew. 
So we're not going to be able to mark in the pews exactly like six feet from this position to that because there'll be some households who will come in and father and mother, son and daughter would take up four places and then six feet from them is where we would sit the next person or household. So uh, we're going to have the ushers trained on being able to judge that distance. So. Mm -hmm. And probably, uh, Tina, uh, well, not probably, but definitely at that Mass on Thursday morning at 8.30 for our, our uh, elders, our older people in the church, will have a, at least an usher or two there to help them to find their places as well. Because of all the daily Masses during the week, that will probably be the highest attended one. Mm -hmm. You want to tell them about having the pews cleaned? Uh, yes, uh, we're going to have a professional cleaning company in here next Monday, the 18th, to clean all of our pews, chairs, and our present church building. So they'll be all clean, disinfected for the first public mass the next day on Tuesday, the 19th. Uh, once we move into the new church building, the, the cleaning disinfecting will be rather simple because we'll have all wood pews. There are no cushions in our pews. They're uh, technologically designed to be comfortable. I've sat in them. They, they are comfortable. So they'll be rather easy to clean. And we're going to ask people not to come in and use their own sort of wipes or cleaning agents on the pews because we're going to clean them before and after every Mass. So, uh, yes. <clears throat> And that's per request from the Pew Company. Yeah, the so. Pew Company has given us only one uh, uh, so cleaning uh, uh, method to use from Corox. And so, yeah, they just, I would feel better if you would just let uh, that be done by our, by our disinfectors, cleaners after the Mass, before the Mass, mm -hmm. than you worry about bringing something that uh, might damage the Pew. That's their concern. Will we be able to sit in our vehicle and listen to Mass this Thursday and come in for communion only? I'm going to be discouraging that because um, the celebration of the Eucharist is meant to be with people together. Uh, and so I, I don't want to start uh, encouraging people staying in their vehicle and just coming in for communion. Uh, it's a whole different experience. It's a whole different celebration that way. So we're really going to encourage people either to come in and be in the building or to watch it at home on live stream. Yeah, Lizdy, just contact Cindy. I think um, Cindy's at, or Lizdy's asking for more info on volunteering. I believe Emily has posted uh, contact information for Cindy, her email address, and the parish number. So just uh, uh, just contact Cindy by that method. So another plug, if you happen to know, know a good landscaping company that perhaps are parishioners or perhaps that you use, might refer them to me. We're going to be putting bids out for a landscaping company to take care of all the uh, trees, shrubs, grass, plantings that are around the new church because we invested tens of thousands of dollars in that and we want to maintain them. Uh, so if you know a landscaping company, let me know. Ben Craig asks, is Stephen Ministry still a thing, or has it been phased out in place of a separate program? Actually, Ben, uh, Stephen's Ministry hasn't been in existence here at the parish uh, for almost all of my time here. I know that uh, Rita Dunning tried very hard the first couple of years uh, when I was here, about four years ago, five years ago, to get that going. Just wasn't able to get uh, enough participation in that ministry. So it's been uh, dormant the last four years, five years. Um, there's nothing really in its place of that unique nature of what Stephen Ministries does.
Uh, Linda, and collections will be placed in a basket as we leave church? Actually, Linda will encourage people to, when they come in, they'll pass by the baptistry in the new church, they'll pass by the baptismal font in the old church, that they would just place their uh, donations in the basket as they enter church. But I will remind people at the end in announcements, if they forgot, <laughs> they can always drop it in as they leave. So yeah, going or coming, you can put it in, but prefer if you could do it when you come in. One of the things, if uh, we have a break in the questions, that, um, again, trying to think of all the eventualities of going back to public mass, and one of those is uh, for people who may be scrupulous and think that they have to go to confession before they can come receive communion. And there's no way I can handle uh, everybody who may want to come to confession on the 23rd of May <laughs> from 3.30 to 4.30. So uh, just remember the church's teaching. Uh, that if you have not committed a mortal sin, and those are very rare, uh, murder, adultery, apostasy, those are mortal sins. They cut you completely off from God. If you've not committed those kind of sins, you are still able to receive communion. Um, in fact, the prayers at the Mass, if you pay attention throughout the Mass, we cry out for mercy. We ask for forgiveness even before we come up. Lord, I'm not worthy to receive you under my roof. Only say the word and I shall be healed. My soul shall be healed. So just know that um, communion is meant to be for the forgiveness of sins as well. Now, it doesn't mean that you should never come to confession again, but uh, I don't want some of you out there to think that you absolutely have to come to confession before you come to communion, especially during this um, time where it's been very difficult for people to get out and celebrate that sacrament. So... Unless you have mortal sin, uh, please, please come and receive the Lord in the Eucharist. Tina, I would like to learn more about our souls. Is there a resource you recommend? And she's talking about S O U L S. S O U L S. Yeah. Gosh. Um. Hmm. I think I'm thinking of the Catechism of the Catholic Church, and um, let me check on that, Tina. This is Tina Marshall, right? Yes. Yeah, and get back to you on that. <clears throat> Mara asks, are there any new rules for receiving communion, distancing in the line, or anything else? So, Mara, that's an excellent question. The ushers, part of the job for the ushers will be to usher each pew out and to keep individuals or household units six feet apart. So when you go up to communion, you need to be six feet behind the household in front of you or the individual in front of you. Uh, as you go out, uh, if you brought your own hand sanitizer, you should sanitize your hands. We hope to have enough hand sanitizers at the end of the pews in the new church, we can do that at the end of the pew before you step out into the communion line. When you come forward uh, to receive, uh, we're uh, the bishop and his infectious disease consultant, highly, highly encouraging people to receive in the hand uh, just to protect against the tran transmission of moisture uh, by the tongue to the, to the minister and then transmitting that to the next person. So... Um, if you have your mask on, obviously you receive communion and you step two steps to the side and then you can pull your mask down and receive um, and then go back to your pew. Yeah. Anything to add to that, Deacon Paul? No, I don't think so. And communion will be only under one form. We will mm -hmm. not be receiving the yeah. blood of Christ during this time, so just the body of Christ. So... So receiving on the tongue is not outlawed. Uh, you can receive it, but out of charity to your neighbor, to the people behind you, uh, the archbishop is asking that you receive it in your hand. And it's a temporary thing, too. I mean, we're not going to be doing this the rest of our lives, so hopefully within whatever time period uh, this lasts, six months to a year perhaps, just be receiving in the, in the hand at that time. And it is the way the first 
communicants received it right at the Last Supper. So. Blanca asks, if married but not through the church, can you receive communion? Blanca, you need to have your marriage blessed first. That's one of the, the laws of the church, that if you are married, you need to be married in the church before you can receive communion. And just contact uh, Cindy, our secretary. She can find a time for me to meet with you. And it's not difficult to do that. I can help you get your marriage blessed. It's actually very, very simple to do. Okay, you need to exercise some brain cells. Random theological question from is Ben. From, is this from Ben Craig? <laughs> <laughs> This past Good Friday, I was especially moved by Pilate's question, what is truth? Mm -hmm. What does this mean to you? Do you think Pilate ever had peace on that question? I don't think Pilate ever had peace on that question because he was so consumed by power, obviously, right? He killed Jesus. He gave the order to kill Jesus because he was threatened by this uh, so-called king and what he might do or what the people might do if you let him go. So I don't think Pilate ever had peace on that. I think it's a very pertinent, pertinent question today. In fact, this coming Sunday, Ben, we'll have the, the reading from John's Gospel where Jesus speaks about leaving us his advocate, the spirit of truth. I don't think truth is something we possess. I don't think it's something that if we think we possess it and we have it in certitude, then we become uh, self-righteous and uh, can be like anybody else in that area. I think it's something that should possess us. Um, and I think of the Spirit, most powerfully that, the Spirit of God, possessing us, filling us, leading us to the truth of who God is and what life is all about. Um, I think it's an ongoing um, adventure of learning uh, that as well. Um, I think we're, this coronavirus crisis, I think is... I really believe it's brought some people to the truth of what life is about as far as what's important. Um, so there, there's a lot there, but I think in our polarized world, especially in our hyper-politicized culture we live in, I think it's hard for many people to uh, understand what truth really is because many think they have the truth and the other side is, uh, is wrong. So uh, I just don't think you possess the truth. I think it has to possess you. Robin asks, if you get to Mass early enough, can you request to sit on a certain side of church? I don't adapt to change very well. LOL. <laughs> My question is, Robin, is that from you or is that from Rick? <laughs> yeah, Robin, it's going to be... It's going to be adjustment after adjustment for all of us. Just moving from an old church to the new church is a huge adjustment. But to do that during COVID-19 time and all these rules about social distancing is going to be another level of adjusting. Yeah, we, the ushers will be instructed, you know, for, uh, people come, they sit them up closest to the front, again, because we want to keep from passing people and going by people. So we just seat people from the front to the back. So if you're, uh, you know, it encourages, which I don't like, people coming late and sitting, sitting in the back and then they get to go out first because we usher people out from the back first. So, uh, so you'll, what I would suggest, Robin, and maybe for Rick as well, you get to sit in a different place every week and you get to admire in the new church uh, the beauty of that place from different perspectives and probably see something new. <clears throat> That's true. You go to the new church, it's going to be new for everyone. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. She says, maybe asking for Rick. <laughs> uh, Lizzie asks, will the doors be open or closed during Mass? Um, we hope to have them open when people come in so you don't have to touch a door handle. But they will be closed once Mass starts, um, partly for security reasons, obviously. Yeah. And the will be opened at the end of Mass for people just to flow out of church. Ushers will be there to open doors, yeah. too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So next week you get a special treat. Deacon Paul Lewis will be on this side of the camera. You'll get to grill him. 
uh, and Emily. And Emily will be here as well. Emily Clark, our coordinator of youth and young adult evangelization. I'll be, I'll be next week at this time with uh, uh, Jane Reisdorf, with uh, Mark Drexel in the church here with our Spanish-speaking ushers going over with them all the procedures that they'll need to know for Mass uh, and being an usher at Mass now. So, so you won't see me on this uh, media next week, but you'll get a chance to see Deacon Paul's face over here in this, this, this seat. And it's not going to be pretty. <laughs> And I want you, Ben Craig, to think of some really hard No, <laughs> no. <laughs> Emily will be happy to answer them. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, thanks for joining us, everyone. Thanks for joining us, yes. Always, always fun to be with you and hear your questions and appreciate your uh, participation. All right. And we'll talk to everybody later. Yes. God bless you all.